So yes, there is a, we're going to record this. I hope you don't mind. And I'm not going to, uh, I wouldn't share this, but it's really, I think AWA does the, uh, has the recording, but, and I would use it just to see how this goes. Um, I'm putting in the chat a link to download a handout. It's not necessary that you have it because I'll have it on the screen um, as well. Um, and let's see here. Um, and we can write on it, we can discuss it. I think we've got a good enough, uh, a good group size here where we can share if we want to share. Uh, so our, I'm going to start our, the slides here too, if you don't mind. Um, just a moment here. Ah. All right. So I call this thing that's that we all have, uh, that's very personal to us, our authentic core. And this is the, the power inside of you that really compels you to do what it is that you do. And I see it as the sun, it radiates from deep inside of you um, like the sun and it, and it flavors everything it is that we do in our lives. So branding expert, Simon Sinek, distilled what stands uh, the most successful brands in the world apart from the others. And it's really that they all have a greater purpose. So the greater purpose of, um, of Spanx from founder Sarah Blakely is to make women, help women feel great about themselves and their potential, which doesn't say a lot about support hoes, but it is that, right? It's how you feel confident and how you feel great. So her greater purpose is much uh, grander than what her actual product is. Uh, most of us, you know, have Apple. So what is it about Apple? Well, it's the, the marriage of um, high design and um, uh, cutting edge technology. And um, another example is Patagonia, creating, manufacturing the best products possible using unnecessary harm, uh, using no unnecessary harm, and also using business to fuel change, environmental change. Um, so we all have something within ourselves. And I want to get us, you know, start thinking about these things as um, something very personal. So in our lives, we have uh, visions, sights, smells, sensations that we have that sometimes just bring us home. They bring us into feeling uh, that this is really personal and really feels good to ourselves. And we know somehow that we have a unique relationship to this sensation. Uh, I'd love for us to just take a few seconds right now and think about what that is. Don't think too long and either write them down um, or, you know, I'd love for us to be able to share as well. So let's take a few seconds. So if you'd love to share, I'd love to hear it. Or if you want to write it in the chat, that's, that's also um, nice. But I think uh, this is an important task because it really gets us in touch with, with who we are, our authentic selves, our core selves. Um, I'll, I'd like to share mine with you. One of my favorite experiences is a vision that I have of going to the Exploratorium in San Francisco before, um, before they created the new one, right? The old one at the Palace of the Legion of Fine Arts, where you had these water stained walls and it was in the trees and it was kind of foggy and it looked like there was nothing. It's just this old drab building, but you knew inside with something really, really magical and discoveries. And I remember this from a very young age, just the anticipation of standing in line to get in was just a hugely exciting experience for me, at least as, ex as exciting as going inside. So uh, let me um, like to see you all a little bit better and I'm trying to figure out how to do that. Um, oops, I just erased, made you go away. Um, <laughs> Alejandra, would you like to share uh, something? Sure. 
actually, it's really funny because I was thinking San Francisco too, but the Golden Gate Bridge, because I used to love driving past it. And all the uh, Victorian houses with their different mm -hmm. colors, like the colors and everything. Yeah, beautiful. And um, Sarah Lutz, I do you have it? Would you like to share? I'm just going to uh, call on people. So if you don't want to just say no, thank you. Uh, sure. I didn't really have a specific place, but um, I don't know. There's been a couple of cities, you know, you look up at like an older building and just like see the detail. I don't know. There's something about that. Like I live in downtown LA, so I get that opportunity wonderful. all day, every all day. All the time. Um, oh, that's, that's a wonderful thing. But yeah. Uh, and then um, let's see here. One other person, um, Betty, what do you think? Betty Navarro. Oops, my computer is making things happen. Is Betty around? Okay, so let's see here. How about June? All right, I'm not having much luck with calling on people. So if anybody would like to volunteer. Uh -huh. Lilith. Tamara, I'll volunteer. Yeah, um, it's interesting how you asked that question because I, I probably you've heard me share my purpose and my vision and my why before, but the way you asked the question now, I'm thinking and as everybody was describing, it made me wonder, it's like, oh, I have so many experiences. But one thing that came to my mind is, um, this experience, the vision, the, the inner peace and feeling that I've had. And, and it's not a happy moment when it happened, but it changed my life. And it was at the time when my grandmother passed away. And to me right now, um, that moment after she passed away, for me looking up into the sky, it was at night and looking at stars. So now every, and the feeling the level of gratitude for having Wonderful. her in my life. Ever since then, that's something that really awakens a deep feeling of gratitude every time I look at the stars. That's wonderful. Yeah, these are all wonderful. These are all things that are, you know, we all look at the stars, we all look at buildings, we all cross bridges, but these are things that we feel, our feelings are unique, um, are unique to us. Um, and this is important because uh, defining these things that are so important to us as they come up, and you know, this is a process of discovery. Um, they they help us remind us who we are, uh, because our core, our core authentic selves, are constant. It's a, it's sustainable. We can always turn back to that. We just have to remember what that is. And sometimes, sometimes we dismiss them because. They are such an integral part of ourselves, um, but they're constant, right? Because like you said, you can always look at the stars or Sarah says she looks at these building details and every day she still loves it. And she's not getting sick of this. Um, these are things that you can turn to when you're ready to grow your business, when you're ready to change jobs, when you're ready to move in a different area or follow a different um, path in your life they help you determine what is the most sustainable thing. And that's always you. So we're always evolving. We're always growing, but there's always a core there. That's, that's uniquely us. Um, so either now or at another time, you know, start thinking about why these sensations resonate with you. And maybe it's something that you're not sure of right now. Maybe, maybe you feel you're just scratching the surface and that's okay. But it's you know these little handouts. You can you can think about these things over time, and um, they're kind of they're kind of magical. So um, let's see here. Oh, there's the memories. So what we want to do is we want to define our own power, because if we don't define it, somebody else will do it for us. So there's two reasons why you want to define your power. One is you want to know what it is. And the other one is you want to be able to tell your story the way you want to tell your story. Um, so most of us here are in the creative fields um, or we're business owners or, you know, 
we deal with people somehow and uh, you can fill in the blanks. I am an architect. I am a designer. I am a photographer. So um, it's simple, right? You just fill in the blank. But how many of those are there in this little tiny one horse town, you know, that we call Los Angeles? Um, thousands, tens of thousands, right? Um, but what makes us unique in what we do, even if somebody else does something like what we do? Uh, I watched the Oscars and uh, Jean Baptiste, the musician, earned an Oscar, uh, won an Oscar, and he said something that just really hit home to me. Um, he said that God gave each of us, God gave us 12 notes. God gave us 12 notes. We have the same 12 notes that Aretha Franklin has. Bach has the same, had the same 12 notes. You know, um, Sting has the same 12 notes. And that was just, the way he put that was just so wonderful to me. And, and that's what the beauty is of, of this world, right? There's nothing new under the sun. And yet we are all unique and we have, um, we have important things, things that are important to ourselves that we can share with others. Um, and some people call it a superpower. Some people call it your why. So, you know, we can call it all those things. I call it your authentic core because I like to use lots of descriptive words instead of being simple. Um, and with all of the multiples of people who do what it is that we do, you're the only one we, you know, who does it the way you do it. So that's really powerful magic. You know, it sounds simple and yet it's like, like 12 notes, but my God, what has happened with those 12 notes in the last, well, I don't know, since humans emerged on the planet. Um, it's very, very powerful magic. And it's so powerful that we have to own it and harness it um, to tell it the way that we want it told. Because the more we let others speak for us, um, the more it can dilute, right? So maybe, you know, uh, Meg, you're a landscape architect. Okay, great. But um, there's, there's so much more to you than that. And um, so maybe you did a job for somebody, I don't know, 20 years ago, and they say, oh, yeah, Meg did a really nice job and placing the lawn for me. Well, Meg does more than that. Um, and it doesn't mean that these people are mal malicious or bad. It's just that if you don't tell them what your story is, they don't know what to say. So I have a, a favorite parable, um, a roomy parable about the blind man and the elephant, and you all may know it. Um, but somebody was speaking about an elephant and a group of blind men heard him and said, well, wait a minute, what's an elephant? So he brought them to the elephant and let them experience it. So the guy at the trunk said, oh, it's like a tree. It's, it's like solid, like a tree. And uh, the guy at the trunk said, um, I'm sorry, at the, at the leg, said the trunk, oh no, it's like a snake. You know, the guy at the wall, oh, it's this expansive wall that goes on forever. So, you know, you get the picture. It's not the whole elephant, right? It's, they're not wrong. Nobody's wrong, but it's not the whole elephant. Um, so to make use of this very powerful magic that we have, we need to, um, to define it. And the good news is that um, we have it. We don't have, to, we don't have to search outside of ourselves for it. The bad news is that it can take courage to ex excavate. Um, and it may not be what we thought it was. I, I, um, my favorite story about this, um, dates back to when I first started Waking State Design over almost two decades ago. Um, I was hired by a young acupuncturist. She was first a biologist. She was, she was very, very good at getting, um, helping C-suite women get pregnant and hold pregnancies through to giving birth. And um, her target client was a very hard driving woman. She was gonna charge upwards of $200 an hour. She rented at uh, least office space in the heart of Brentwood. And she told me she needed to put a, a mermaid on her logo, her card, her stationary signage, because she was a mermaid in her past life. And I could see that she was very, very serious about this. And the, you know, it's funny because I, I called her a couple of months ago to, to talk about using her example in the story in my talk. And 
she and I both remember our conversation identically. Um, the first thing I told her was don't ever tell this to anybody. Do not tell anybody that you were a mermaid because nobody is going to pay you $200 an hour if you were a mermaid. And nobody is going to want to see you if you got a card with a mermaid on it. And, um, but I told her to hold, hold very tight to this because it's clearly very important knowledge. It was precious and it was powerful, but it was also a point of vulnerability. Um, she was yet unknown, you know, uh, very young in the profession, and it just wasn't going to, it wasn't going to allow her to reach the people that she needed to reach. So um, we ended up doing something very elegant, you know, crisp white rag paper, blue with just a hint of like a waterline at the bottom and people came and uh, now she's actually renowned around the world as a acupuncture, acupuncture fertility specialist and doctors in Los Angeles, a group of premier fertility specialists are negotiating a building space and they said, we want you to occupy a bank of um, a space there of, of exam rooms because we tell our people to go to you and just do what you say. We don't know why it works. We don't know why, but it works. And, and so she's formed these relationships with uh, top fertility doctors in, in, um, in, in our town here. So a few months ago, I looked on, link, on um, Instagram and I had just laughed because she whipped out the mermaid. She whipped out the mermaid and she told her her story about how she was a mermaid and she did it. Um, she knew she was safe. She had she could do it on her terms in her way, and she could own that story at a time now where she's from a point of you know a position of strength. Uh, and for her, the mermaid is the guide that brings you through the the waters of fear, right? So for her, the ocean represents fear and the unknown, and here the mermaid was the guide. And um, so you're, you know, wondering. Uh, so again, you you want to make sure that you protect yourself from well-meaning naysayers, from people who might think that you're silly or whatever, and or say things in in ways that that really don't represent you. So you have to own this thing. And um, now you're maybe wondering that it's really great, but what about me? <laughs> What about me? So let's talk about you. Let's talk about each other. Um, so now, you, you know, whatever that is that first comes to your mind right now, um, think, you know, just write it down. I don't care if it's on a handout. I don't care if it's on a scrap of paper or take note of it in your mind. Um, take, let's take a minute right now and, um, just write down something that resonates with you. So it's okay to feel that you're just scratching the surface right now um, because you might be. And, uh, and it's okay if you've written down a few things or a lot or they're silly. Um, I've helped a lot of small businesses and startups find that strength, that core strength to create their branding and um, to create branding that resonates with them over time as they grow. So these are important clues for you to recognize and to define. And I'd love to hear, um, I'm gonna take volunteers if anybody would like to share what they've written down. And again, there's no judgment and don't judge yourself either. Uh, 
I'll volunteer. It's wonderful, Jen. Okay, so then this, this is your authentic core is your why, right? Is that mm -hmm. what we're going for? Okay. So mine, I, I like to tell stories. Um, and if I could add a spin where, you know, the architect, um, aka my client didn't see, especially like say for instance, we're doing photographs and they're like, hey, this is the shots that we want. And if I could get it in it from a different way, then um, my mission is accomplished. The same thing for like video. Like if I could tell the story in a different way that's unique because the whole idea, the whole goal is to always think out the box, right? Mm -hmm. So you just always keep getting the front, back, center, inner, and then it kind of gets boring. And uh, that would like totally lose passion for me. Right. I, I mean, I guess you could say it's almost like for an architect, it'd be like, can you imagine building the same building exactly the same, like in inception, you know, it would be a big headache, right? So it's like, what can we do differently? How can we do this better? There we go. So, so that's, that's, that's it. I think as you dig deeper into it, you know, what can you do differently? So you're look, you're always looking for how to do something differently, right? Correct. And that might be part of your why, because you, that you're seeking that, right? So, you know, yes. for me, I actually believe in magic. I actually expect things to happen that are not, that don't logically necessarily happen, but I have this expectation. So um, that's what fuels me is I'm looking for I'm looking for something that I don't see and, mm. and using my intuition. So it's, it's, you know, there's always something behind, there, there's often something behind your why, right? So you, you start with, you love to tell stories and then you bring out that you're always looking for something different. So there's, you can keep digging a little bit further, I think, and bring that out, right? Because there's something else that's, that's behind yeah. that. Right. Yeah. Um, like, and go ahead. I don't know because I'm just recalling like uh, when I've shot up uh, some projects and the two, it's like it's great when um, you know they say, "Wow, I really didn't picture this shot, um, but I really like it." So it's like one of their shot lists plus one or two or mm -hmm. whatever. Or when they even you know it's a huge compliment when they pick the shot that they didn't see, but you know, it's something that I add. I really enjoy that. It's almost like uh, if you were, you know, giving someone a gift during the holidays and you just, it's not about giving them the gift as much, but it's seeing their reaction. That's, yeah. what, that's what feeds ah, me. Like, okay. Right. Yeah. So you, you love, you love giving gifts, right? You love giving those gifts. Well, with the, the, the disclaimer, with the added note of, I want to be there and see the reaction. Not just what? give it to them. Like, here you go, bye. No, I, I was like, no, please open it now. I want to see. So you like to you experience, know, you like to experience the their their um their feelings. You like to experience yeah. what they're experiencing. Correct. Wonderful. Anybody else? No? Okay. Um how about you, Alejandra? Would you like to share? Um, sure. I was kind of thinking, and I don't really know how to do this because I don't have my own firm or something, but. Oh, no, no. Okay. So that, um, <laughs> you bring you wherever you go. Yeah. Okay. So one, one thing that I really wanted to do, and we kind of do it a little bit at my firm is bringing good design or just even just any sort of design in general to people who can't necessarily afford it. <laughs> Because like, I feel like in LA, it's so kind of segregated who, who gets to afford, you know, to use an architect versus who does work kind of like mishmashy and not really well thought out. And, you know, our city kind of looks that way because so many buildings have just kind of been like thrown together over the years. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't know. I'd like to be able to like work on that. Well, I think, yeah, that's really important to know about yourself because as you, um, and again, you know, you don't have to own your own firm to know what your sustainable, authentic self is, right? You don't, this is, this is something that you can bring to any firm, right? And this is something that you can look for either to carve out a place for yourself within where you're at, 
-hmm. or as you grow in time maybe maybe you want to move somewhere else that that this resonates more with you it's it's really about discovering what that thing is that is yours so that um as you go through life it serves as a north star it serves as um, something that you can check back on. And, um, you know, I had, I had to go back to my North star, even just this morning, the, the work, a lot of the work that I'm getting right now is very, very organizational. And as I was telling Alejandra before, um, before we started, that's to me, that's a weak point. It's, it's something I don't necessarily like, and it's something that I don't necessarily feel that I'm good at. And, I've been shown that I am good at it, but it's not resonating with me. And so I'm, I had to remind myself where, where the magic lies in that so that I can feel good about it and know that, Hey, maybe I'm not always going to do it right, but I'm, I'm going to find something in there that makes me love what I'm doing right now, regardless of what it is. And, um, I think we all have tedious parts of our work right? There's good housekeeping, there's the books, there's the outreach, there's the following up on things, there's the details, and, and sometimes they can feel overwhelming. But when you remember why it is that what you're doing, it, it just starts to, to fuel you. Um, oh, yeah, so why the why? There we are, we're at, we're at the why the why. Um, and now, when you go back to, oops, when you go back to the statement, um, I am a, I am an architect, I am a photographer, I am a, you know, life coach, you infuse that statement with all of this discovery. So you're bringing that into you because you feel that now and you remember why it is that you're doing what you're doing. And even even though you don't tell everybody, you don't have to tell everybody what your secret thing is. I had a, um, a friend practice this with me and, and she said something that surprised us both. And this is a woman that I went to college with and we're very close. And she said, KD, she said, Kevin Durant, I'm like what? And she said, I don't know where it came from. Kevin Durant, the basketball player. And I said, you know what? And just as somebody who's never played basketball, she doesn't, you know, she's a dancer. She's a, she's also a landscape architect. Uh, but we, you know, she said, I'm going to look into that and see why. And she, she works hard. She's always on the mark. She, you know, she, she's diligent. She goes for the long shot. She puts herself out there professionally in her work. Yeah, not, she's a very soft-spoken, understated person. But you'd be surprised what some things are that you can unearth to bring, you know, to bring with you. And it's a, um, it can be a very powerful feeling to own those things, even if it is unexpected, or maybe it's not what you want. Maybe you didn't want that word that came in, but yet you know that somehow it's yours. Um, and you will start to see that these words that you're using to discover this authenticity inside of yourself start finding their way into your conversations, right? So maybe, maybe you don't use the word mermaid or what, uh, Minnie Mouse or, or whatever it is, but you start using those things that, uh, are based there, are based on that. And as these words are making their way into your conversations, you'll start to see that people, you draw people to you that resonate with you and that help kind of reinforce what it is that you believe, or maybe they challenge you. And, and that's part of your growth and also part of your connection. Uh, it's like when you're, thinking of a vacation that you really want to do or a car that you really want to have and you start seeing like a but you're driving and there's a, a bus stop and it's got a tahiti vacation destination thing on it and there's a tahitian restaurant that opened up down the block and you're always passing it or 
um, or there's a white Porsche that you're always, you're always seeing that white Porsche wherever you're going. And it's like, that's your car. You, it's not that these things haven't been there before. They were there with or without you. It's just that you're starting to um, pay more attention to these things that have a deep, um, a deep meaning, deep meaning for you. And the, so you're reinforcing your message to yourself. So you can, you know, start a notebook or, you know, I'm, I'm the, the queen of stickies, right? I, uh, you can't really see, there we go. I'm the queen of stickies. So I just put stickies all over the place that say, you know, meditate on your vision or be focused or whatever it is. And, and uh, you can turn back to this. Um, the other thing that you're doing is you're giving people words to use to describe you to others. So you've got now everybody that you've talked to becomes a messenger for you in terms of, you know, getting work. I mean, it could be your kids. It could be uh, your aunt. It could be anybody that, um, that, that knows what you're doing because then they can start to, to tell other people. And so um, somebody's looking for a photographer, they go, yeah, you know, I, there's a, a guy who really gets this incredible joy out of bringing something unexpected. I think you're going to like him as opposed to, yeah, June's an architectural photographer, right? And that's important too, but, but you, to build on that is important. Um, and then there are the times when you're wondering why, why am I doing this? God, I hate this. And then you have to remind yourself. Like, you know, like I said, I had to remind myself this morning. Um, so I'd love to hear if anybody would like to share anything else about this. If you want to go back to um, things that resonate with you, sensations, visions, or um, your superpower, why authentic core mermaid selves. Well, uh I'll share again. Yeah. I'll share when, um, when I'm from the Midwest. So when I first moved to uh, Chicago, driving into Chicago and seeing the expansive uh, cityscape, so awesome. And this is before I wanted to do what I'm doing right now. So like just looking at the building and looking at how the, the freeway and how it flows in the city and you're just like, wow, this is Chicago. Like yeah. that kind of, yeah. Wonderful. I just remember it, it's vivid. Yeah, and I can hear it in your voice. It's the the wonder and that excitement, right? And I can hear that. Yeah. And that's um, that's what separates you is remembering that when you're, I don't know, going to outreach events or whatever it is, and you just like, oh, I don't want to do this. But then you remember and you want to share that. And and it gives a bigger picture of who you are and what you have to offer. And, and that... Um, honest enthusiasm is very, very strong, very powerful tool to use. Yeah. How about uh, Magdalena? <laughs> so I, I do actually want to share uh, one story. And Tamara, that actually is something which uh, you brought up. So I am an architect. I have my own practice. And um, I take pride in doing things the right way, having a very high technical level of expertise on my projects um, and bring a, I believe, high artistic value. But what I noticed was happening some time ago that I was just too good technically. So people were describing me as this technical, she can solve the problem, but mm -hmm. technical way. But what that was doing, it was undermining the um, design focus uh, in my office that, you know, that was, you know, what I was just becoming known. And I made an educated effort to project Counter, against my personality to project uh, me as a more creative person, even though it was always there, but I use words to actually describe it. Uh -huh. um, I downplayed, I pushed this differently, the technical side, it was always there, but I, 
I just stopped putting emphasis, which was very difficult for me to do. Right. And, um, what I observe is just even today, you know, it's been going on for several years now that um, the clients whom I have, they describe me uh, and use the narrative, which I more carefully craft. So I, I think you are absolutely right about uh, owning the narrative because that will actually come back and shape your practice um, in uh, more ways than you know just the uh, the vocabulary. It will actually help people see clients see uh, uh, what you do very well and actually focus on those skills. So so I. I wholeheartedly agree and uh, here's my example. Thank you. No, that's wonderful. Yeah, you've experienced it. That's it. And then to push it even further, the reason your work can be so creative is because you know technically how to make it work, right? So it's, it's one thing to be wildly creative and it's a whole other thing to be able to realize that in a way that's sound. Right. So when one feeds the other and yes, by by using our words and putting them you know, on our website and on our conversations, even you never know what's going to come out of conversations at the coffee shop where you, you know, or when we used to go to coffee shops and, and get coffee and maybe we'll start doing that again soon. Um, but using our words in a way that um, is authentic to us can feel a little strange at first so you just have to practice it you have to practice it and bring it out like you said Magdalena it was a little uncomfortable for you to discount the technical expertise that you offer but it um it you had to do that in order to shift things back to where you want them to be for your work and for how people to see you. And then again, you know, like the mermaid, you can bring it back, right? You can bring that back in and, and use it from another position of strength. Maybe, maybe once you've been able to establish um, yourself as a, creative, as, a, as a creative architect, then you can bring that back and say, oh, by the way, I'm also a badass, you know, technician, right? It's, it's, um, it's very powerful to be able to define what these things are and to hone them over time and to allow them to evolve and grow and not feel hemmed in just because you've made a commitment to being this or that. So I guess I never really thought of branding outside of businesses, but do you use branding in like the way that you describe yourself to a new person? So like, you know, you always do the like, oh, my name is this, I work in this. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's um, you, the more you start thinking about this stuff and you can just kind of put it on your back burner because I think um, most people don't think about these things when they hang their shingle or where they get their first job or even, even when you go to school, right? You go to school to study this and, and you have an idea that this is really important to me. I, you know, I went to go study fine arts. I want, you know, you went to go study architecture. Um, but we don't think about these reasons why. But as you um, meet people and start to say, you know, yes, I'm, a, um, I'll, I'm gonna use a bad example. So forgive my simplicity in this, but I'm a creative architect. Like, well, wait a minute, what is that? What does that mean? Oh, well, I do very, very creative work. Um, uh, but I'm, you know, but the only reason why it's able to be so creative is because I, I really know my craft and I really know how to get this thing built. It, and it starts conversations and it makes you stand apart from other people too. So, you know, maybe you're shy and maybe you don't want to stand apart, but if you want people to see the real you, you do, you start to bring this in and, and envelop it within, um, your language and, and also, your self language, how you talk to yourself, right? So it, it, instead of discounting these things that are so close to us to, to really embrace them and make them part of our lives. And you'll see that it, it can fuel you as, as you just go on um, doing mundane things or when you're doing fabulous things or when you're 
you've got an opportunity to, um, you know, I was in the elevator once with Frank Gehry and, and um, it's like, wow, to have had this knowledge then would have been really great for me. And I didn't, uh, you know, it was a long time ago. So you, we are put in situations where um, that can lead us somewhere amazing. And if we know who we are, we can help direct that path a little bit, right? It doesn't, it doesn't mean that you still don't have the unexpected or the chance encounter, whatever, but it, it helps you own your path. Can I share something quick? Actually, this is a tag on to what Magdalena was saying. Absolutely. Um, it's interesting. I was listening to your story, Magdalena, and was thinking how my brand actually has developed uh, coming back from my technical background. Uh, currently, and none of, I, all of you seems like are architects here, but I am an architect of human life, I guess I should say. I'm a coach and a trainer. Um, so I do leadership training, coaching for persons, individuals, and organizations as well. And uh, Tamara is actually helping me with my flyer for an event. And she today put it actually perfectly. She grabbed from my website what defines me, what's my brand is the bridge. And um, that came to, my, to me uh, years ago when a client of mine in a technical background, I work, I'm a, I, I have an IT background. So I work in the medical industry with a digital x-ray. So I'm very technical and I do the training for the end user. And I understand the technical lingo, but I speak the end user's language. So I would always be the one that would call me, Lilith, what did they say? What did the BART say? What did the IT person say? And I would translate it to them. This is what he means. So one day during one of the meetings, one of the IT guys actually called me a bridge. He said, she is the bridge between our IT department and the end user because she's able to communicate both languages. And that was kind of years ago. And then I realized that's my brand in the human, and right now I'm a coach, speaker, and trainer. I do coaching and organization and individuals, and I realize I bridge the gap between where he, people are today and where they want to be, their goals, their dreams, their potentials, right? So in a way, I realized I'm the bridge, whether I'm in a technical field, I'm bridging interaction, communication, and understanding, and in my coaching business, I'm bridging this individuals or organizations where they are today and where they want to be. So to your point, Magdalene, it was very interesting for me, hard to kind of transition and help people see my creative side because working with people and coaching, it's not technical, it's very creative. But bridging that and to your point tomorrow as well, it took years actually. I realized, I look back at that, I'm like, oh my God, they called me a bridge years ago while we were speaking in a technical term. So that's where I realized that's what my brand is. Yeah, that's wonderful. It's, it's something that's very central to who you are as a person. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the, the you know, branding is a word that I didn't want to use for a long time because I felt it was very marketing language and, and I just, it didn't resonate with me. I thought it was, but, but it's, it's language that people understand. And again, it's something that I, you know, I kind of took ownership and said, oh, well, that's actually what, you know, your deepest, most authentic self, you can manifest and, um, you know, make something of it because you think it sounds right, but it's not going to be true to you. And when you see what it is that you really feel you are or where you, where everything begins, you realize that as tried as it might seem to you, it's actually not at all. You know, I, um, I had the good fortune of working for John Jurdy um, before I started my, my um, practice. And uh, his whole thing was money. It was all about money. And of course he was this hugely talented artist and architect, I mean, and visionary but he was about money and what did he do? He, everything he did was hugely financially successful, right? He laid the groundwork for the shopping experience today. He laid the groundwork for, um, you know, with the Bellagio Hotel and Casino, what that experience was. But for him, and if you look at his logo now and his logo 25 years ago, it's based on the typeface from the dollar bill. It's about money and, and, and but that didn't, detract from his creative and intellectual 
genius. So it's, um, you know, finding these things are, um, it's a process. And again, you may feel like you're just scratching the surface. Um, and like I was telling, uh, talking with June about, you know, there's always something behind, right? So keep, keep searching what's behind that, what's behind that, and, and open up more doors. And um, for me, what this process has done is it's infused a lot of, uh, a lot more joy into what it is that what I do. Um, you know, for a while I saw myself as a graphic designer and I'm like, oh, I hate that. I'm like in a tiny little box, you know, I'm this tiny little thing. And, and that's, you know, that's part of what it is that I do, but it's like your clothes, right? Your clothes are what's on you. They're not, they're not you. That's not you. Um, so I'd love to open it up for, you know, a little bit more discussion. We have a few more minutes. Anybody want to share? I have a question, um, Tamara. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm wondering more about, you know, that authentic core that you're talking about. Is it that, um, is it possible that there's, I guess, two, like you were previously saying that it's okay if you don't tell this to anyone, you keep it to yourself. So in Magdalena's case, for example, she maybe has the technical side, which is part of her authentic core, but she's not advertising that. And she's kind of, keeping that as a, you know, um, like um, uh, something that she just just does and, and is good at, but then she has the creative side of her. So is it possible that there's two, I guess, authentic cores? Oh, totally. I mean, I think there's more than one for most of us, right? There are things, different aspects of our lives and some are central, you know? So again, in, in Magdalena and in Lilith's case, you know, there's there's great strength in both aspects of the technical and the um, creative side. And I would say from just, you know, all of us here really, right? So we're in the, we're doing creative work. We're dealing with people. We're, we're synthesizing what people are asking for. You know, I'm sure all of us here have had a client where we're looking at them and thinking, I need to ex excavate this person because they don't know what they want. And so in order to do our work for them, we need to discover that. And so, you, you know, you start to get hints and clues, right? So um, yes, there, there are gonna be different aspects and there are gonna be different aspects from what you might design in a person's home versus what you might design in their business. Um, and if you look at, you know, people that you most admire, there are different aspects in those people that you admire. And sometimes they're related, you know, maybe somebody is um, kind, right? Just, just supremely kind and you just love working with them, but they're also, um, I don't know, a brilliant interior designer, right? Maybe, maybe they've got this vast memory and, and knowledge base where they can pull from. And so dealing with them is just this incredible pleasure. So, you know, how do you kind of knit these things together? Like I was saying with, you know, with Magdalena's is yeah, she's creative. And the reason she can be so creative is she actually, you know, it's not just in the drawing, it's what she's going to manifest. You know, her, her technical knowledge is what's allowing her to, for her creativity to soar, right? Because she can back it up and she takes pride in this. So it's important for her to have something that's really solid that um, is also manifest in a creative way where people can appreciate that. So I think there are, there are gonna be a lot of things and then there are gonna be things that kind of flow in and out of your life, right? I think Sona, you and I were talking once, um, sometimes I just dig hot pink. I want everything hot pink. I change my logo, I make it hot pink. I want everything hot pink. And, and then I'm done, I'm like, oh, I think I'll do green now. And it sounds silly, but I love that. All of my bowls, all my plates, all of my, all of my dinnerware are different colors. <laughs> and every time I go to get a bowl, I'm like, ooh, I want the red one, or oh, I want the blue one. And it's silly, but I love that. So, you know, there, there are gonna be themes that are like chords that from, you know, when I was, um, really young, I had this vision of a chord going from me up into the heavens. And 
uh, it wasn't religious per se, but it was this vision that we all have cords that tie tie from as far up as we can imagine to as you know all the way down through the floorboards and um, and I I feel that we're those are our anchors, but they don't keep us from going anywhere. They're just what brings us closer. You know, as these, again, this is another theme, like the exploratorium theme for me. This is another theme for me that um, I've had for most of my life that I keep going back to. So, yes, like you know, the exploratorium for me is about anticipation and magic and discovery and things that I don't understand. And the core thing is is just that wonderful feeling of knowing that somewhere somewhere in my rabbit brain, because I can have a rabbit or squirrel brain, I'm grounded, right? And I'm grounded in that. So anyone else wanna wanna share while we still have a few more minutes? Hi. Hi. So I'm Shanoa. Um, I just wanted to make a, uh, reiterate a point of yours, which is about the others to others conversation and just like put a circle around your point there for people. Cause I, I'm in marketing as, and um, it is really important to manage your brand if you can, which you can, but to take that time to then be able to um, you know, the hope is people know what to say about you that that moves the conversation forward in a positive way. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, I just wanted to. Yeah, no, thank you, thank you for um, <laughs> thank you for coming. Are you with AWAT or are you? Yeah, yeah, I'm on the board. I'm do the uh, director of sponsorship. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh my gosh, honey, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, mm. <laughs> I'm on late too, so. Yeah. Okay. No, well, I'm glad that you're here. And yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, I think, and I found it myself. People will always say, oh yeah, they do this. And you're like, oh, I do a lot more than that. You know. Well, it's so much easier for people to remember you though in networking scenarios. If it's an easy, oh, that's what I can, like this is the person to connect. Exactly. There's a, there's a plus there too. So it helps people connect easier which gives yes. you more referrals potentially. Yeah. Uh, so there's like good value in that. Yes, absolutely. And, and the more you can stick out with somebody um, with your own enthusiasm, it, it does, it touches people, right? It touches them in different ways than, than your regular polite conversation. Yeah, totally. Thank you, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you all. This was wonderful. I enjoyed um, I enjoyed the conversation. And um, if you get a chance to take the my little my my handouts here, um, but I would encourage um, encourage you to just again make this just part of something that you touch base with periodically. And um, you know if if you're making a change or again, like I said today, I'm wondering to myself, why am I getting all of this really high level organizational stuff for work? And I have to, I, it tells me, you know, hey, I didn't stop being an artist. I didn't stop, you know, obviously I'm being presented with something that I need to learn to fuel what it is that I'm doing creatively and to, to enjoy that. And then sometimes it's, um, Sometimes it's something that tells you, you know what, if I go into this, I'm going to feel like I'm being dragged through the mud and I just can't do this. So just to have that anchor in you that reminds you who you are and why, it, why you're doing what you're doing. So thank you very much. Thanks so much, Tamara. That was really great. Thank you. A lot to a lot to digest and a lot to think about for sure. Well, hopefully, over time, it's a again, it's just a process, and it's um, I don't I don't think most people discover these things right away. Some people know immediately, you know, out of the box, this is what I'm going to do, and this is why I'm going to do it. But you know, most of us have to remember to explore those parts of ourselves that we kind of take for granted. 
I right. think it evolves too, right? It evolves. Yes, I think so. But I think yeah. we're still, there's still a starting point. It's like, you know, we're all, we all started off as an egg, right? So it's like, we're, there, there's still a, a kernel in there that's, that's, um, that's going to be there no matter what, and it's going to grow and it's going to take different iterations. Um, you know, the other thing is just that 12 notes was just uh, mind blowing to me when he, when John Baptiste said that when he was receiving his Oscar, it was like, oh my God, the 12 notes, my head almost, my eyes popped out of my head. I was just like, oh my God, he said that in such a beautiful, succinct way. Uh, it was very illiterate, um, uh, lyrical and, and literary and, and um, just kind of mind blowing to me, something so simple. And yet that's what it is, right? We're all breathing the same air. We're all walking the same ground, but we're all unique within that. Yeah, thank you also for uh, sharing those worksheets. Those are great. Um, and I want to give a shout out to uh, June for being our in-kind photography person. Yay. So I just want to put that out there. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Meg. Appreciate yeah, thanks that. for coming to our events. Yeah, well, this is, um, well, I have to uh, be more engaged. Uh, yeah, that's the only way that I could learn more about what you guys do. Because, you know, even when, uh, Magdalena talked about how she went from technical to creative. I didn't want to take over, but I am very curious on how that came about because there is a story there. And so it's like, how did she do it? What were the, her steps? And I'm sure, um, you know, other architects can learn from her on how she did that transition. Yeah, I'm curious myself. I'm just saying, just. Well, you guys will have to connect. Yeah, absolutely. I, I just wanted to just say uh, very quickly that I think that that uh, I just uh, noticed because I think that that um, technical expertise and trying to solve things um, can overshadow our problem solving in creative way aspects of our profession. And I just not only mean about architects, I mean about creative people who actually um, produce tangible solutions, whether this is photography, landscape, you know, just you name it. And I think that this is something which we all do actually to lesser or to greater or smaller degree. I think, you know, I just realized this because of how the clients were just so happy with my technical solutions that I realized that they're just kind of uh, forgetting to mention the um, really beautiful other things I was delivering. And what that was causing was bringing this different type of clients to me, which I wanted a more wholesome client. So I just had to look and make people realize that, uh, you know, I'm also a painter, an artist. I do other things besides that. So I think that, that we are all a little bit uh, probably having that duality between uh, technical and uh, uh, and artistic in our types of professions, you know, and that's probably why we also were drawn to it. Okay, I'm <laughs> going <laughs> away. <laughs> Wonderful. No, I think that's it. I think anybody who does anything at a high level with discipline has, you know, that du some duality in there. But again, there's always something behind it, right? So there's always a way of, of bringing that out that that um you know for me the discovery is exciting and it fuels me and it and i'm i've been experiencing it taking me in different directions and so um it's just something sometimes we have to remember to do it great thank you again thank you yes thank you take care everyone thank you Right.